Hey everyone, how are you doing? Let me just turn it down a sec. So, welcome to a brand new series. This one is called uh, Getting Started with Robotics. So, if you ever wanted to build your own robot, don't know where to start, um, and you don't know what you'll need, um, what, what skills you'll have, how to do it, all those kinds of things, stick around and um, we'll get started. And if you stick around until the end, we'll also have a review of a popular kit um, by Kittronics, which is a, a robot kit similar in size to the SMARS, but um, we'll get to the review at the end. So um, let's have a quick look at that. Uh, anim So as you can see in that animation, we're going to be looking at um, a few different things over the next couple of weeks. We're going to be looking at um, printing, we're going to be looking at um, assembling the parts, the electronics, and looking at the coding as well. So not missing any steps out. So my name is Kevin. Come with me and we, as we learn together um, how to build robots, bring them to life with code, and have a whole load of fun along the way. And uh, if you're watching live, please... Uh, Drop a message in the comments. If you're new to, to this stream, either on the replay or if you're watching live, um, just type new in the comments as well and say hi and let me know uh, uh, that you're watching what you think. So let's have a look at um, what we'll be learning over the next couple of weeks um, and the things that you'll need to bring along the way. So let me move over to Keynote. I've also got a new Stream Deck toy to play with here. So uh, let's make sure we're still on audio. Yep, all good. So I can switch scenes nice and simply. So, um, as you can see, production values are slightly up this week. I've been uh, spending a bit more time and attention on this series. I want this to be one of our best yet. So, over the next couple of weeks, um, we'll be looking at um, every aspect of getting started with robotics. Everything that you'll need to have, to know, to, to build, uh, to get there. So, this is week one. Week two, we'll be looking at 3D printing the parts. So we'll be looking at downloading the, the STL files, and that's the name of the files that are popularly used on um, 3D printing websites such as Thingiverse or Cult3D. Um, and there's a whole load of different files that you can download there. So we'll be looking at which are the right ones to download. And then when you've downloaded them files, what do you actually do with them? Um, so we need some instructions about how to build our robot. So we'll take a look at that. And we'll have a bit of a sneaky peek of that uh, shortly as well today. Uh, and then we'll be deciding, you know, which files do we actually need to print? So are we going to build the quad robot? Are we going to build the, uh, the wheeled SMARS robot? Are we going to have the Caterpillar tracks or not? Um, and then we're going to look at how do we slice them STL files with Cura. So slicing is a 3D printing um, term, and it's how you convert the, the 3D model into something that can be um, squirted out the end of a 3D printer. It's rather like a toothpaste tube that sort of squirts out a, a pattern of filament. So um, that's what the slicing tool does. It instructs the 3D printer how to do all that magic. So we'll be looking at that. Um, we'll be looking at what, what kind of 3D printer settings do we need to have? How do you level the bed? Um, I use something called Octoprint, which is a Raspberry Pi. So next to me here um, is my 3D printer. Um, and we can we can look at the kind of settings that I use um, to make my 3D printing work okay. Uh, and I've, I've been doing 3D printing a number of years now, probably about three or four years. So I've got a few a few bits of experience that I can share with you. Some of the downfalls, some of the things that are... Uh, um, learnings along the way uh, and then we'll be looking at you know how do we prepare the printer as well you know how do we level the bed how do we choose the right filament and color so if you want to have a nice colorful um, SMARS robot similar to this one you know you might want to choose the different colors so what's, what's the chassis color what the wheel colors what's the the track colors what's the um, the range finder covers and so on so we can look at how to choose all that kind of thing and what kind of filament that we need as well uh, and then we'll print the parts out as well. We'll, um, you know, look at how long it typically takes to print. So what I will do between this week and next week is I shall print out a load of parts myself so that I can show you how that process goes. I'll record a few clips of that along the way as well, um, just so that you can see what's involved in that and get an idea for how long things take. Uh, and it's all dependent on the settings, but we'll, we'll see how long things take. So then in week three, we'll be looking at assembling all these parts together. Um, it's not a complicated thing to assemble the SMARs, they're quite straightforward, um, but we're looking at all the steps that are required in that. So assembling the, the parts themselves, cutting the different wires, what lengths do we need for the um, for the motor wires. So we've got on here, you can probably see there's some, uh, some wires there. Um, this is 
a pair for each of the motors and a pair for power. So we'll be looking at, you know, what length of cable do we need for that? Where, you know, what kind of um, cable do we need for that? And, um, you know, there is a little bit of soldering involved. Um, you might be able to buy motors that are pre-soldered, but um, it's not a complicated thing to do. And it's one of the, the skills of robotics that you probably need to build up. So uh, and we'll look at the kind of things that you need to have uh, in the way of equipment and parts um, shortly. Uh, we'll need to attach the battery as well. That's a nice, simple one. And then attach the motor shield, the, uh, the bit that sits on top of the, uh, the robot that does all the work. There's a few different varieties of that. Um, so that's week three. Week four will be wiring up the electronics. So, you know, connecting the wires to the uh, motor shield. So that means we have to understand the pinouts, the voltages, that kind of thing. We'll be plugging in the range finder so that we can actually get it to sense distances. We'll be connecting up the motors, connecting the battery. Um, like I said, looking at the pinouts and other options as well. Like, you know, if we wanted to do a, like a line following or uh, Bluetooth or the gyros and accelerometers, or the uh, you know the digital compass how can we attach that to these as well so there's quite a few options and a little bit of learning in there as well and then week five we'll be looking at the actual code so how do we bring this thing to life with code using the arduino ide because um, it's mainly using the arduino um, on these types of robot it's just sat underneath the uh, if i just pull that out there you can just see the, the arduino is just there on, underneath so that's a uh, an Arduino clone. So we're looking at how we load the code, where we get the code from, what the code means, how you can extend, uh, yeah, extend and uh, enhance the code, and we'll be looking at, you know, what 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 does the code mean? How can you learn more about that? And we've got a whole series of uh, lessons on that as well. So if we're looking at things that you'll need to bring, um, you can actually grab all these from smarsfan.com, um, or you can find them at many other places. Um, I put Smars Fan together to help bring together all the information about Smars. So I've been quite particular about which motors, which motor shields, um, Arduinos, all that kind of stuff, the range finders. Um, I purposely picked ones that I know that, are, that work well for this, this robot build. So you can go to smarsfan.com and uh, find things all in the shop there. And you can also look when you're building through the instruction lists, um, all that information's there too. So, um, hey Sammy, how are you doing? Really glad to see you on uh, on board today. Thanks for joining. Um, I've got a little surprise for you later as well, Sammy. So, um, so these are the kind of things that we'll need for the uh, for a build of Smiles. Well, a range finder is the little thing that sits at the front, looks like the face. So inside here, if I take this apart, you can see there's a little component there. If I just do that, you should be able to see it. That's the range finder that helps us uh, detect distances. And um, just put this back together. There we go. It also gives it a little face. So that um, is one of the components we need. That we need the uh, the motor shield. Um, and there's a few varieties of that. Like I said, I use the Funduino, which is the image that's on display there on the, on the slide. Uh, but you can also use the uh, the official Arduino uh, motor shield three. I think it's called. Uh, you'll need an Arduino itself, uh, not the Nano, just the regular Uno. Uh, a nine volt battery. Um, and a 9 volt battery connector. These are very cheap to, to come by. Uh, what I usually do with the battery connectors is buy a pack of them from uh, uh, Amazon or somewhere like that. And that means I've got a whole load of them for other projects as well, because you never buy, you never build just one robot. <laughs> and you'll need a pair of um, motors as well. Um, there is a couple of different varieties of these motors. Um, I use the 150 revolutions per minute variety. Um, I have seen um, and I have built um, some that use the 300 and they are very fast a little bit too fast um you can't really control the thing so if you're going for speed they are definitely the ones to go for but um if you want to speak it so it's much more controlled the 150 are a good variety there um, and that's pretty much all you need in parts if we look over at the equipment then so you're going to need a 3d printer to print these parts out now, if you haven't got access to a 3D printer, there are other options. You can um, go online and um, I think it's called 3D, the 3D Hub. And there are people who've got 3D printers who accept orders and you can basically place an order with them to, to print you out the parts that you need and then they'll ship them over to you. Um, probably be more expensive than you would think as well to do that because it's mostly people's time that you're paying for because 3D printing is quite slow to do. So uh, to do it well, to do it accurately, um, you're going to have to pay for that. 
the actual filament to buy itself isn't that expensive. So um, if you're thinking about getting the 3D printer, maybe now's the time to do it. Um, so I've used a few different types of 3D printer. I've I started out with an Anet A8 clone. Um, I bought that from, um, I think on eBay actually. And it was about £120 um, because I wanted it sort of next day delivery. Uh, and when we do the episode on 3D printing um, next week, I'll show you the, the photos that I took of that and maybe some of the footage. Because uh, it starts out quite basic and you can build extra parts. You can print extra parts that you then add to it. So um, it's quite an interesting um, hobby kit and gets you into understanding how these things work as well. So um, if you start with one of them, it's not a bad thing. You know, it keeps the cost down under a hundred dollars now. I think that is hundred pounds. Um, and I've recently upgraded, well, about a year ago, to an, an Ender Pro Three, which is from Creality, and um, that's a really great printer. Very robust, very well put together, very very good quality, um, and um, probably about twice the price of an Ana A8. So you do get what you pay for. Um, but there's a whole lot of them out there. There's lots of reviews on there. So we're not going to focus too much on which printer to buy um, or whether you should buy one yourself. But, you know, I would recommend if you're going to do this as a hobby, there's nothing quite as good as printing something in 3D that you've designed and sort of holding that in your hand. So time to buy one of them. And then the filament, um, you can buy a whole load. So under my desk, here, I have a whole load of filament. I'll just show you some of the, uh, some that I've not actually opened yet. So... I bought this um, a while ago. This is a very small spool, and this is a like I said, it's very narrow. Uh, and this is um, flexible TPU. So this is designed for stretchy, twisty, a bit like um, phone cases, that kind of material, plastic. And I was thinking, you know, maybe we could use this for the wheels, for the the tires, or the, uh, the caterpillar tracks to give it a bit of extra grip. And also to solve one of the common problems that we have with smiles, put that away there, which is to do with um, when you when you put the tracks together, they can either be floppy or too tight. If the if the spacing or the, the things are not printed right, they can be too tight, and then the, the motors can't actually turn. So that's one of the things that um, we'll look at when we get to the 3D printing. How do we solve some of the common issues? And you know, I'm using flexible filament for the for the tracks. Is one option for that. That filament is a little bit more expensive. Um, again, you get what you pay for. Standard PLA, which is the plastic that we use for 3D printing in the main, um, is quite affordable. It's about 20 British pounds for a kilogram, between 20 and 30 pounds for a kilogram, and that lasts forever. That's that's a lot. So that's what I've currently got on my printer next to me there. Um, so what else do we need? We need a soldering iron. Um, I don't have a very expensive soldering iron. When we get to that episode, I'll show you the soldering iron. Maybe we'll do a little bit on the desk here so you can see uh, how easy it is to do and go over some of the skills required in soldering, some of the tips, tricks. I'm not the world's best solderer, but I can I can, can get by. And like I said, my soldering iron is just a very cheap one. It's not um, ther thermostatically controlled. It's just plugged straight into the mains, heats up after about five minutes, and away you go. Um, another thing with the solder, you'll need flux. Um, this is one of the mistakes I made in the early days. I didn't buy any flux. And it's um, a very gooey substance that helps the solder um, form around the parts. Um, so it helps them run in all to little cracks and crevices and just form a really solid, tight mechanical bond when, the, when it sort of sets. So this is a must. You, you should get some flux. And then uh, you need some wire and some wire cutters. So I went with standard um, red and black wire. Um, I'll, again, I'll, I'll post links to the uh, the kind of um, type of wire that, you know, the thickness that I've used and how long these pieces need to be. They don't need to be very long, uh, but you do need some wire cutters to sort of strim the ends off to give you a nice uh, uh, bit you can use to connect them together. And you will also need some DuPont connections. Let me just see if I've got some of them to hand to show you. Um, I think I've got some just in this desk here. There we go. So DuPont connectors come in a variety of different um, connectors. DuPont is the you know the big American company that um, they're a pharmaceutical, but they also do um, other things too. So you can buy these these braided ribbons like a rainbow colour, and you can just sort of peel off the the bits that you you want to use. 
Um, and there's two types of connector. There's like a male and a female. Um, so you can see there, if I hold that up there, they have like a squarish connector. And down the end, there is, um, if I do that, there is, um, well, it's a square with a hole in it, essentially. And then you can buy the other type, which have um, the female connectors on the end. Well, the male and the female connectors, sorry. And um, yes, these things um, connect up just by pushing them together. And the reason that you need these is if you're going to use the rangefinder, the rangefinder has some male connectors on it. And let's just put this back together again. Oh, I'm doing that completely wrong there. Sorry about that. Fiddly thing to, uh, to do when you're doing it on camera with one hand. There we go. So we will essentially need um, male one end and female on the other. So these are these are both the same ended. So that's a um, female to female on that cable there, and this is a, a male to male one. So we need a, a male to a female because we need the the male ones to connect into the top of the Arduino and the female ones to connect onto the top of the male connectors on the rangefinder. So we need some DuPont connectors. What happens is you can usually get a, a whole pack of every different type. They have sort of long ones and short ones. Um, you can use either type. The short ones I find are a bit too short. They're about um, five centimeters long, whereas these are about um, 15 centimeters, I would guess. Um, but you can buy a pack that's got all the different ones in very, very cheaply. Um, I wouldn't recommend, unless you unless you want to spend a lot of money on the, the crimping tool, don't be tempted to buy a, a cheap crimping tool for DuPont connectors because uh, it's, it's kind of a wasted investment. You'll never get them as good as the bought ones that have been made in a factory by a purpose-built machine, uh, unless you're willing to spend probably over $100 on the actual crimping tool. So um, I made a mistake of doing that. It's not worth it. So that's the uh, DuPont connectors, and you'll need a USB cable as well to plug into the... Uh, the Arduino, just that little connector there. So whatever end you need to plug in. So the, I'm using a Mac Pro and uh, that's all USB-C. So unless I use a, some kind of dongle that connects into that, I just have one here. I've got this one, which is like a little uh, connector that goes into the side of the, uh, the MacBook. And then it has, you know, some regular USB two and three connectors on there. Or you can buy a USB cable that's got the right end. So I think that's a USB USB A that's called that sort of squarish one, and whatever end that you need on the other one. So I'll go for a USB C for the Mac. So you need a USB cable as well. They usually come with one when you buy them. Um, so if that's worked so far, that's all you need. So that's the equipment. Um, and then from from next week. So what you'll need for next week's session, where we're looking at three D printing, is the three D printer, is the computer to download the files on. Uh, probably the one that you're using to watch this, I would say. Most people that I can see through the statistics are watching this through a desktop PC. So um, carry on using that. <laughs> that should be good enough. Um, it's it's not very power hungry to do 3D printing. Um, most 3D printers can either have a, a little memory card that you put in, or they can be powered, or they can be um, instructed, controlled via USB. So I have a. Um, where's it gone? If I unplug this, I can show you. So I have a little Raspberry Pi, uh, which is just its own little container there. Um, and that's running Octopi, which is some free software, which allows you to run your 3D printer using the Raspberry Pi to sort of control it. And it means I can offload all those tasks into the Raspberry Pi. Just pick this back in um, without worrying about, um, you know, my PC crashing or anything. This is a dedicated machine that's just going to just run the, the the printing side so for the cost of a raspberry pi um you know this will run on like raspberry pi 2 or 3 they don't have to be very powerful i don't think they will recommend to use it on the raspberry pi 0 they're not quite powerful enough um to do the printing you can get some issues with that i believe so raspberry pi 2 3 or 4 is great for for octopi and uh, it has a web interface so you can you can drag and drop stl files or the the g code files that will be produced onto Octopi and it'll start the printing from there and you can even enhance it with apps to your phone and things like that so you can control it and see where it's up to and plug in you know there's camera options as well I've got them here but I've not plugged it in for a while so there's like 
with an extension cable you can create some very dusty that you can create a little camera thing that plugs in to the side of your printer and you can monitor the prints and create little time-lapse videos as well it's very good so all that's included in octopi very very recommend that very very recommend that <laughs> Um, what else do you need? So you need a slicer. Um, so if you haven't got Cura installed or something like Simplify 3D, you'll need to get that installed so you can do the slicing, you load in the model, you then set the settings which we'll go through uh, next week, and then it will produce a G-code file. G-code is the, if you ever look, you can actually open up a G-code file in like Notepad or um, Text Edit or something like that, and you can see it's just uh, commands that the, uh, the 3D printer understands. You can actually write G-code yourself if you're that way inclined, but um, yeah, life's too short. <laughs> You'll need some filament as well. You don't need a lot of filament to print a SMARS robot out. They're actually quite efficient on, on use of filament. So um, as long as you've got more than say a quarter of a one kilogram roll left, you've got more than enough. You're not gonna run out. Um, it's not even something I would consider when I'm printing them out, unless I'm, you know, really uh, the very last threads of it. And you'll need some time and patience as well. So 3D printing can be a bit um, a bit fiddly at times. Sometimes things don't quite go to plan when they should do. That's just how 3D printers are at the moment as a technology. Um, I did hear a rumour once that Apple were considering getting into it. And I thought, you know, imagine a HP or an Apple 3D printer. Um, it would just work. <laughs> you would just load in the, the filament and it would everything would just work perfectly. The bed would be perfectly level all the time. It all would be clean. Uh, but we're not there yet, um, so we have to do a little bit of uh, maintenance and um, have some skills ourselves. But this is all part of the fun. So that's um, what we need for next week. Um, what we'll look at now, um, I'll just get my uh, notes up there. Um, so we talked about everything in there. Yes, I think so. So let's go back over to me. Do you like the new stingers? I created them myself. Unfortunately, the software that I'm using, Ecamm, Ecamm Live, doesn't let you do proper transitions uh, of your own. So normally you'd have like um, your A scene, the stinger would go past and you have your B scene. Um, it doesn't quite allow that yet, but I believe they are working on that. So um, all that time I'd spent creating that nice stinger graphic has been wasted, but hey. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> I've got some random questions for you. Pineapple on pizza, is that a yes or a no? <laughs> so personally, I like a bit of pineapple on my pizza. Call me weird. <laughs> I think it just adds a bit of uh, a bit of zingy zinginess to it and um, a bit of bite. Uh, but I do like quite spicy pizzas anyway, so is that something that you'd go for? And, uh, you know, movie-wise, Back to the Future or Bill and Ted? What, what wins out from your point of view? I, I've, I can't wait to see the new Bill and Ted movie. I believe that's out very soon if it's not out already um, and then finally Mac or PC so I was asking some of these questions and we'll, we'll have a look in the community um, in a second and see what people have been talking about there on the Facebook group um, so um, just before we do that I was just going to um, just going to go over to my um, smiles cam there uh, what was I going to show you on that do you know I can't even remember what it was mm. It mustn't have been important. We'll, we'll come back to that. Um, okay, so let's go back to let's go back to this screen share. So this time we will look at um, Chrome. Let me just grab. Why does it not let me do that? Let's go to Chrome. All right, we have to just unlock that. There we go. Sorry about that. Right, so look at that. I've got 99 subscribers. <laughs> I am one shot of me hitting the uh, the major milestone of 100. It means I can, instead of having this horrible channel name, uh, which I currently have, uh, I don't think you can see that, can you, on screen? Well, anyway, I have a horrible channel name at the moment. It's just a whole random load of letters. I can choose a channel name. I can have Smaz Fan as my channel name. So let's go over to the community. Um, Let's see if that um, is updated on the screen. Oh, yes, it is. Good, good. Um, so, so here's some of the questions that were I posed the other, the other week. Um, so I was saying, you know, what do you find most challenging when you're building your own robot? Um, and I gave a couple of options. Um, one of them being programming and getting the software to work. 
um, 3D printing and designing the parts and assembling the robot, the electronics and wiring it together, or something else. And there were two other options that uh, people added to this, and I love these, so <laughs> we'll start with that one there. The fact that I, I know it's without emotion and will never love me as its creator. <laughs> So that was by uh, Matthew who added that. So I think we could probably code something in there. We can expand our AI to to to, to love us as its creator. <laughs> and then the one by Matt uh, Munson, which is getting left alone long enough to do anything. That is a challenge. <laughs> but I think if, if you want something enough, you make time for it. So the whole point of this series is to try and give you some real good laser beam focus on uh, exactly what you need. Um, so that's some of the, the things people have been talking about there. Um, what else did we... So I did a, a bit of a video response there. So Camellio... Um, now, am I pronouncing that correctly? Is it Camellio? Camellio. I think it is. So Camellio is the inventor of the Otto DIY robot, which is just across the other side of the room from me at the moment. Uh, this this sort of square, um, cuboid-looking robot that's got the feet and it can do the little dancing thing. Um, amazing, amazing robot. Um, so he's the creator inventor of that. He runs AutoDIY.com, and he was saying that um, because most of his um, Auto DIYs run on uh, an Arduino Nano, and they've they've put so much effort and um, features into the code that they are at the absolute limit of what's possible on the Arduino Nano. They filled the the RAM right up with all, all the features, so it can do a whole load of different dance routines. It can sing, you know, it can play music. It can respond um, to lots of different um, things. And, you know, is, is it an impasse, really? You know, how do they expand this further um, without taking features off or without making, you know, the code really, really pared down? So, you know, one of the ways is to use a different chip to look at maybe like a Raspberry Pi Zero if that'll fit in or using a Node MCU or um, ESP32, that kind of chip. Um, and one of the problems there is that, you know, programming language, so he's learned C and learning Python is a bit of a learning curve for him. So, um, you know, we did the, the, the series on Python um, the past couple of weeks. I think there's about four or five episodes that we did an hour long each um, on Python. Um, and really that was just our dipping our toe into the water and focusing very heavily on um, on robotics and SMARS. But um, there's a lot that, to learn there. There's a lot to, to get stuck into so he was saying is there a way to essentially take his code and make it into python is there a shortcut for that or can you make python just output to that board um, now you can with micropython and that's something we definitely will do an episode on um, so stay tuned for that that will probably be in about five weeks time we'll, we'll definitely do a video i might even do a recorded one on that rather than a, a live stream um, just because it's a requires a few steps so I just want to make sure I've got that I've done it a few times myself I've got MicroPython running on about five or six boards um, but um, I think there's just a little bit more work grip you know to polish it up really but we can have a look at that we can certainly share work in progress so um, that's something that he was asking about and then Zach was also talking about um, uh, an L239N motor driver board I think I might have one then down here somewhere. Um, this is what happened. There we go. That's what happens when I'm not prepared. So I think this is a the kind of board that he was talking about. Let me just go full screen. Um, so if you look there, that um, is I think the board he's talking about. Um, this one's by Drock. And they're very simplistic. Um, that's the that chip in there. I think. No, that's just a heat thing. So, yeah, these boards are very, very simplistic. So you've got a great big heat sink on here, and that's to sink. So you can put in there 12 volts, uh, and it'll it'll burn off all the heat, so it's just down to 5 volts. It'll get rid of all the extra voltage. And then you've got, um, I think that's the voltage in, because there's like a 5 volt or a 12 volt in with a ground in the middle. And then you've got motor A and motor B there as well. And there's a little jumper on there to say, um, oops, over there, which is to say whether you're using the 5 volts or not. Um, and then just the pins there as well, um, which is how you control the thing. So uh, just about to see that there. So there's like a motor A, motor B, um, enable, disable. Very simple board. 
and he was having some trouble getting I think that one to work um, so I was looking at that one too and I, I had similar kind of issues actually so um, maybe it's a bad batch or maybe they're just not using it right I think they use pulse width modulation as well which is not what I would expect so um, let's have a quick break for engagement so hey Paul how are you doing <laughs> You don't understand anything, but you're enjoying the show. Thanks for joining me. <laughs> I'm uh, into my show flow at the moment. So Paul uh, is one of the uh, people that joined me on the, the Leader, the Live Every Day in August, which is a live streaming pros um, event and community. A great learning experience. And it's about, all about how to improve your live streaming skills and uh, making the whole thing a bit more engaging. Um, they go through all the, um, the skills rather than the tech stuff, but you, you do tend to pick up a lot of tech along the way. And uh, Paul was one of the really great people on there very very funny person <laughs> so uh thanks for joining along paul um glad you're watching so what else were we talking about on there so we were just looking at um let's just go back to oops i don't want that one i want my there we go back to facebook so yes um zach was having a few issues with that and we were just talking through um what that could be um and I think in the end it was to do with pinouts. And I was saying, if you go to the Smiles Fan website, I've got some detail about pinouts on there. So if we head over to Smiles Fan, which is the website I've collected all together, all the information about Smiles robots, um, I've broken it down into sort of three main areas. I am thinking about rejigging re this a little bit. So we've got Learn, which is one of the areas where you can learn all about um, how to build these things, how to print it, and so on. I've got something called the Design Studio where you can look at all the different um, components and how to design them in 3D. So that was the first series of videos that we did live streaming back in uh, June, I think it was, or July. Um, so we looked at all the different components and spent an hour designing those in Fusion 360. Um, and they were my very first videos as well, live streaming, so interesting watching them back. <laughs> Uh, then we've got things like build instructions, so we can look at the, the wheeled instructions, how to build a wheeled robot. Um, and it's got step-by-step -step instructions on that as well. Um, not very much narrative on there, if I'm honest, but um, you can sort of visually see um, how to build this thing together. Then we've got an area about electronic components, all the different bits and pieces, so you can learn more about a particular module, like the line fuller module. You can you can buy the part if you want to add that. And some of these are extremely cheap. Look at that one, 52p to buy that. It's very good value for money. Um, and yes, all the different components are represented there as well. Or you can just sort of pick them off from that, that view there. So you might want to learn more about the motors, for example. And you can look at all the different varieties there. We were talking about them earlier, about the 100, 150 revs per minute versus the 200 and 300. The 300 is obviously very, very fast, but um, can be a bit uncontrollable, I think, when you try to remote control the thing or line follow. Then we've got some of the additional modules that you can add on, so you can make your Smiles robot um, do lots of other things, like there's some Lego mods. You can add it, um, you can make it into a firefighting mod so that it will... Uh, you know, start squirting water out and put out fires. Sure, the plastic would melt before this thing would be practical, but hey, who am I to say? It's a fun thing to do. Um, this one there that's a soil moisture, so you can have a little garden robot. Reminds me of that film, um, is it Silent Running with the two robots? A very sad film that. I remember watching that and thinking, this this isn't happy at all. What's, go what's going on with this? Um, I can see Sammy is just joining us as well. Hey, Sammy, how are you doing? Studio Geek 32. Hope you're enjoying the stream. Um, so let's go back to there. What else have we got on there that's worth calling out? So that's the modules. Then we've got the parts themselves. So each of the 3D printed parts, um, we've got a page on them. So you can see, you can either download the part yourself. You can watch a video on how to create it. Um, or you can just, yeah, like I said, just download the part itself. Um, and then we've got a few videos. So this is where I started putting all the... Um, playlists and also the show schedule so if you ever wanted to know you know what's what show is coming up next you can see we've got the getting started in robotics series there's a play a link to the playlist there and there's all the um, six weeks worth of content um, that's going to be on here so this is sort of week zero week one really um, and there'll be links posted up to so I've scheduled two shows currently uh, and as I schedule the rest of them they appear in there too so and then there's a few links as well to other videos that people have made around the web i've not updated this in a while but um yeah if you were just wanting to sort of see um you know what else people have done with it you can look at some of these for inspiration 
and the design studio is the the area where we, we looked at all the different components and we spent some time in the 3d software so if i just press play on that for example you can see um on screen when that finally starts playing um i'm in the corner there and we're designing some part there this is the caterpillar tracks which is these uh, yellow things that are currently on screen so that's the the website so that's the learning area then there's a whole section on how to code it how to program it so um We've got code in both Python on Arduino. Arduino is for the, the little board that sits in these. Um, if you're using the quad robot, the, the walking robot, that uses Python. So we've got both of them. And there's some software that's called Scratch. And Scratch is used in schools. So this is what Scratch looks like. It's like a visual programmer. You can just drag blocks from the left-hand side. You can set the settings in them. And you can visually see how the code fits together. It's designed for kids in school. Um, and if you're getting started in programming, it can also just help solidify in your mind what some of these concepts are. And I made a little component that would talk to Scratch and the Smiles robot. So you can build a code and actually use um, Scratch to control it. So that's what that's about. Um, then in the play area, um, this is where we looked at some of the things like, um, and this is maybe where I need to just move things around a little bit. So some of the other videos where we looked at um, programming um, the Arduino, um, you can see there lesson one was all about how do you move the thing backwards and forwards, how do we turn it left and right in lesson two, lesson three is about how do we detect things, so ultrasonic sensors, um, number four was about um, how do we position it in 3D, so how does it know where it is, so it can, um, it can take action, how does it know it's moved 90 degrees and things like that. How do we then control it with Bluetooth, um, using the little Bluetooth module, and um, finally using um, servos. So we'll look at some servos um, shortly, actually. Nearly, nearly oh, there's an image broken there as well. And then there's the line follow module, so you can make it follow a line. And I posted a, a video on uh, Instagram a couple of days ago on um, some examples of the line following. That's great fun. So that's the play area. Um, I've got links as well to other things that are useful. So um, Thingiverse is where I first came across um, Smars. Uh, that's where Kev Thomas, the creator of Smars, um, first uploaded the files. Um, so there's links to the originals there. There's some links to some coding resources, some video tutorials, and then some more Smars specific things as well, like the uh, where we put the source code. And um, about us, is about this website about me um, and I've got in there as well an interview with creator Kevin Thomas so um, this is back in almost two years ago now uh, I did an interview via by email <laughs> I sent Kev Thomas um, via his um, Thingiverse page um, some questions like you know I just wanted to know where this came from you know what what was it that drew him to um, to create this and you know he's only he's what 24 now he's quite a young person to have created something you know that's so stand out um, and he is a design student so it's not a surprise that he's come up with this design but it's a, an amazing uh, design and then i have a blog post so i've not posted in a while i did put a post on there in july about um live streaming and uh beginning of that and also the link to the, the show schedule too and uh, finally there is the shop so if you want to buy some of these parts you can just add these to your cart just like that it's very easy to do um, and then you can just check out um, it uses shopify so um, i do have to pay for that every month as a, as a sort of going concern um, we don't get a great deal of sales through there but i just wanted to sort of make it easier for people to buy things i'm not really thinking about that from a money perspective um, so um, that is um, a quick look at the, the website and some of the community stuff. I have created a new community as well called Small Robots. Um, I was just thinking a bit wider than just Smars. There are some other robots that I'm quite interested in uh, building. Things like um, the Otto DIY, uh, Open Cat, um, and there are some others as well that I'm quite fancy having to play with. So that's an area where we can look at Smars as well as other things too. So back over to me. Um, so what else we're we going to look at let's have a quick look at the uh, so Sammy's saying uh, is that my website yes that's the website that I created um, a couple of years ago everything to do with these small robots 
um, I've created into a website. So I maintain that as well. And uh, yeah, you're like Paul Burke in that you don't know what I'm talking about, but you're, <laughs> you're carrying on watching on. I appreciate you watching along. Um, I really do appreciate the interaction there too. So I, I was happy, having some questions before. Um, pineapple on pizza? Is that, a, is that a thumbs up? Is that a thumbs down? And Back to the Future or Bill and Ted? Which is the, uh, which is the best? So what else are we going to do? Oh yes. Um, so, <laughs> does anybody get the reference to this? This is uh, this side here. There's a, a cartoon that uh, I watch with my daughter that's called um, Jojo's Jojo's Bizarre Adventure, and uh, it's like a manga cartoon. And they have these weird characters whenever they're sort of danger. <laughs> so I'll do a bit of an overlay with that. <laughs> um, yes. So at this point, I think um, I need to remind you as well. We need to uh, like, subscribe, and press that little bell. Yes. So we are literally one subscriber off um, our 100 mark, I think. Um, let's just quickly have a look on uh, YouTube and see where we're up to. I think it was 99. Uh, I'd had two subscribers join about an hour before. We're at 100. We've literally just met 100. That's fantastic. That means I can name my channel now. And that's a major milestone for the channel. That's happened live while we were recording as well. So that's fantastic news. I'm so pleased with that. Our first 100. So I'm 10% on the way to getting the uh, 1,000 subscribers that's required for the monetization milestone. Um, but hey, <laughs> I'm very pleased with that. So um, let me just go over to commenter of the week. So this is our little uh, section where we look at who's uh, made the comment on a video recently. Um, let me just turn off that light as well that's in front of me. Um, so as I said, Sammy, um, Sorry, Sam O, um, who joined at the very beginning of the video, um, said I had a little surprise for you, didn't I? So you're actually our commenter of the week. Um, so you were saying uh, another brilliant one, thanks again. Uh, you use Mac OS uh, and Arduino boards and the ESP32 as a chip. And um, Udi's is also quite a, a, a popular commenter as well. He always sort of comments. So um, he was saying he mostly uses Linux um, on Windows machines as well as uh, WSL2. What that stands for? Is that Windows? I don't know. I don't know what that is. Um, maybe that's a board. So yes, that's the uh, the commenter of the week. Um, let me jump back to. Anything. Oh, thank you, Sammy. That I really appreciate the, uh, the subscribing. I think you you pushed us over the line to 100. So you're not allowed to unsubscribe. <laughs> Although I think once I've named the channel, that's it. <laughs> I can stick with that. Um, and you're asking, why am I using gaming headphones on a Mac? Yeah, so I've got the uh, the Razer ones. They've got the little uh, pull-out microphone. Where has it gone? You can uh, talk like that. It's just, I wanted a, a reasonably good, decent pair of headphones so that when I'm doing the stream, I can, uh, I can just wheel this little thing and hear what the background sound is. I can still hear the music playing. I'll just stop that. There we go. We can have some background music, though. Uh, using my Streamlabs, so if I get my other, get my phone out here, and I load up, there we go. I do our split screen. You can see. I do it that way. This is my desk at the moment, so I've got a brand new Stream Deck, which enables me to change scenes just with the press of a button. So when I'm live streaming. Um, Quite a lot involved in running a show like this as well as you know going through the content that you want to you know talk to people about um you can do things like um i go into here to the folder i can start some uh, background music playing let me just see if i can hear that it should be quite quiet yeah there we go some nice subtle music um so i've got that's my macbook pro in front of me there i am <laughs> And I've got a 27 inch iMac as well. And there's my camera and ring light. And then over here we've got the microphone. I've got the Blue Yeti Nano. I know some of you will be interested in that. Uh, it's on uh, not a very expensive arm. I'm looking at getting a nicer one. And the shock mount as well. So if I tap that, it'll make a lot of noise. And uh, over here, this mess is the, <laughs> my 3D printer. So 
my 3D printer's there, there's just a big pile of junk just there. And this is what we're going to look at, uh, the last part of the video. So this is uh, a Kittronics, you can see it there, Kittronics, um, I think it's called a Mini or a Mark II. I'm just going to turn my headphones down because I've got a bit of an echo and it's very distracting. Um, yeah, so this is a, a Kittronics. Um, it's about the size of a Smars. If I put it next to the Smars there, you can kind of see um, kind of similar in size. Um, and this thing was not cheap. It was probably about £20 for the base, um, which is just the this wheeled part here. Um, you have to provide your own uh, micro bit, which fits in there to... Be the brains. Uh, micro bits are what, about £10 each. Um, I then added this, um, uh, what do you call it, digger part and there's also a line follow module on the bottom as well. Um, each one of them extra parts is about £10 extra and there's also a, um, little trailer that, that connects to the back of it and it has a servo inside so you can you can tip this thing up and down um, and again that's probably like another 20 pounds for that and these things are made very cheaply it's all flat plastic and then just little, bolted together with little screws uh, and then regular servos sort of you know to give it the automation and um, it has two wheels but there's no third wheel so these these um, end bits um, I can point to that these bits essentially stabilize it so when it's going along I'll just put it there you can see that's always going to be rubbing on the floor so this thing can't go over any kind of obstacles it's not like our smiles if I put that there which can you know that can go over lots of different terrain because of the, uh, the caterpillar tracks so yes this thing is um, for the money I don't really rate this and these things are not designed to work together so this um, digger part look I've got the line follow module on there and it can't actually go all the way down so whoever's designed this did a really poor job of designing this I'm not very impressed with the build quality of it the cost of it it's sort of flexibility um, and expandability so not very impressive at all so that's um, the Kittronics I said we'd do a bit of a review of that um, just at the end but yeah not very impressive <laughs> as my I drink for the live stream too. So that's what I can see when I'm live streaming. I've got my comments there on the screen. I can see um, you know, myself in the corner there and whatever that my phone is currently pointing at. And I've also just got a monitor on there just to see what's going on with the, uh, the stream. So I can see currently six people viewing at the moment. Um, some people chatting there and there's a bit of the super chat window on the side. And just a look at the quality of the stream it says excellent condition i think it had some buffering earlier on but it's fine now and i've also got my show notes as well my show flow so that's what i can see when i'm doing these things so if i now go back over to here and i just uh, press the host button it'll flip me back over just to me so i'd be interested to see how all that sort of fits together how that works um so we've hit our <laughs> our 100 subscriber milestone i'm so so happy about that so impressed with that um Thank you so much for, for being part of the community, everyone, and making us hit this milestone. That really means a lot to me. Um, so next week's show, then, is about um, printing the parts. Um, so have a look back on the, the video if you need a list of the parts. I'll, I'll update the, the show notes as well to show you the kind of things that we need for, to get started with that next week. So we need a 3D printer. We need to have um, some filament and, and all the bits and pieces we talked about before. But don't worry if, you, if you're not building along and you just want to watch it. That's fine as well. You can just enjoy it. Uh, you can see how, we, how, we, how easy it is to do. Uh, and I'll start printing out the parts as well. So by next week, we'll be able to, to look at what the parts are, how long they take, uh, the sort of sequence that you can print them in, and so on. So uh, let's have a quick last look at the, uh, the comments and see um, what people are talking about over there. So yeah, some of you you asking about the headphones on the on the Mac. Uh, why why I've got gaming ones? And it was just I wanted some headphones. I went out to the shop, uh, the shops on uh, at weekend on Saturday, um, and I didn't really see anything that I fancied. This was like last weekend, um, so I thought I want some reasonably good headphones. I could see lots of YouTubers were using sort of gaming headphones, and I thought, well, why not? The, probably not the best audio headphones you can buy, but. Uh, I did want some that have got a physical wire rather than Bluetooth, just so there was no latency or lag or interference. Uh, just wanted something that just plugs straight in. So 
that's why I went for them. Uh, what else do you say? So you're saying how many Macs do I have? I have an embarrassing number of Macs. So um, we have another one over here as well. That's a MacBook Air, I think. There's three of them knocking about. Um, I have a Mac Pro in the loft as well, quite an old one, one of those um, big chunky ones. Um, I've got two original Mac Classics, which are like the, you know, the archetypal Macintosh that's like a little cute cube thing. It's got a 10 inch, 9 inch screen on it, I think. I've got two of them. They're black and white as well, which is just funny. Um, and yeah, there's like, there's another couple. I've got an old Mac Pro. Um, that's knocking about this one's due to be replaced next year so i'm excited about that too and this imac is getting on a little bit as well so when i tried doing live streaming for that it was really pushing the limit of it the fan would be on and ecams would be uh whirring away so yeah i've got quite a few but i, I do have pcs as well there's two pcs in my loft i'll, I'll take some video of what's in my loft there's a there's a lot of stuff up there <laughs> a lot of uh, geeky stuff and uh, yes i'm based in the uk um I'm sort of in the middle. If you, if you drew out the sort of shape of the UK, let's do a bit of a, a bit of sketching. So the UK is kind of like let's try and figure out what the shape it is. So you've got uh, like Wales there, and then there's kind of like a foot bit, isn't there? And then there's that bit that sticks out there, and it kind of goes in. And then you've got Scotland up there. <laughs> I have it kind of about there. <laughs> If that makes sense, London sort of down here, it's sort of Cornwall down there, Scotland up here. And what's weird is they say that you know this is considered to be the northwest of England. So if this is like northwest. This is a uh, northeast, and then you've got like the Midlands, and then you've just basically got you know the south. You've got um, southeast and southwest. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's where I live, about there. Blackpool is about there. I think Liverpool is about there. Just for info, I think. Is that right? Yeah. And then this, this bit is, is Wales. <laughs> and it's one of those things that in the UK, they always compare different things in other countries to an area about the size of Wales. It always tickles me, because like, how big is Wales? It's a big amorphous blob of land. So you're in the, uh, the US, are you on the west coast or east coast i can never remember i think you're on the east coast are you sammy and paul where are you you're on the west coast or are you in the middle <laughs> the middle um so um <laughs> james saying you come a long way since lego and the sinclair spectrum i still have my sinclair spectrum that's upstairs um i have that in my uh, my box of uh, box of bits I'll bring it out for one of the episodes. It's the little rubber key computer that started it all back in the 1980s, 1982. So Sammy says, uh, nice. And uh, William McLear, hope you're doing really well. Really well. Um, uh, Studio Geek 32, Sammy says, uh, what, Mac, Mac Classic? How old are they? Wow, you can make dollars from that. You certainly can. So I'm keeping mine um, for a bit longer. I, I had one and dropped it and smashed the case on it. It still works though. And it doesn't even have a hard drive, that one. It's got um, like a single density drive on it. There used to be a big thing about double sided drives. This was like single sided, um, single density, 800k per disc, no hard drive. Just takes forever to load anything. Um, but that's a, yeah, Mac Classic. And then there's the Mac Classic SE Special Edition, which has got a hard drive in it. I think it's a 20 meg hard drive. Think about that. <laughs> you should be streaming on a PC. You are so right. So when I build my uh, my garden office, my streaming studio in the garden, uh, that will have a dedicated PC for running probably vMix. Um, might come round to that. But I'm using Emacs for now just because uh, you can do some things on there. One of the things, Sammy, I was saying that I'm quite frustrated at. Paul, you might know this one as well. I did these uh, stinger transitions. So if I go to, um, let's have a look. Um, if I swap over to that scene, that little transition then, you can see me bef before and after the transition. It's not doing the transition properly. And that's because Ecamms doesn't let you do custom transitions, which is really frustrating. Um, <laughs> my dad says, where's Wales? Wales? <laughs> That's Wales there. <laughs> I've never the, the best artist in the world when it comes to drawing. Um, ah, so you're in New Jersey. 
fantastic. So I have uh, some family that live over in um, Long Island in New York State. Uh, we visited them a couple of years ago. Probably going to go back once the, uh, the lockdown is lifted when COVID's, no, you know, just a distant memory. And Paul says, ah, West Coast. Aha, nice. Oh, yeah, that, that's on my bucket list to go and uh, see sort of California and San Francisco. Um, Bodega Bay, where the birds was filmed. I want to see that. And uh, Sammy, you say you've got a lot of Macs as well. Tell me, tell me about your Macs. You have eight PowerBooks. Oh, wow. PowerBooks? G3 PowerBooks? Are they like a G5 PowerBooks back in the day when it was all, all the 68,000 PowerBooks? So I've got a, a lot of nostalgia computers as well. Lots of I've got... Um, so Carol, who was talking before um, on the the stream um her mother gave me a, a bbc micro computer these are like from the 1980s as well um so bbc is like british broadcasting corporation in the uk they had this uh, computer literacy program in the 80s and um there was a big competition to see who could bring out you know a computer that would be sponsored essentially by the bbc so you know it'd be big business to whoever won this and it was acorn who won it and acorn went on to create um a risk chip the Acorn wrist chip um, arm, you might know it, is what is inside every um, Raspberry Pi. Um, it's what eventually became the, you know, the, the, the silicon that's now in iPhones and Android phones. They're all ARM. Um, they have an ARM history. So, yeah, Acorn, that's where it all started. And I've got the original BBC, um, BBC Master B, which is a very nice one to have. So, um, oh, and you've got more. Tell me, tell me about all the... <laughs> You've got, you've got two PowerBooks G3s, uh, six or something PowerBook G4s, and three Titanium PowerBooks. Wow, that's a lot of, that's a lot of kit. Yeah, and they they all run different versions of Mac OS as well, don't they? Because um, some of them are the the uh, G4, G3 chips. Um, they are not Intel chips, so they have to run a different code base altogether, and. Apple are going to transition from Intel chips to their own, excuse me, their own custom silicon very, very shortly. So I think by the end of the year, they're going to have a Mac Mini that comes out that's purely their own silicon. And it's essentially the same chip that's in a, an iPad, I believe. So uh, that'll be interesting uh, what happens with that. It'll all be seamless, I'm sure, and we won't really care about it. It'll just work better. Um, cool. Um, so you're saying, oh, a lot more iMacs, uh, MacBook Pros and more uh, all still at work awesome so i think we'll have to wrap it up there it's uh, just getting to um, eight o'clock are oh, you going to get one of the first silicon apple silicon absolutely i think i'll be on that bandwagon too i might just have to uh, sneak one in through the business account <laughs> but yes we'll, we'll have to wrap it up there it's gone to eight o'clock now i want to sort of keep these reasonably to time so um hopefully that's been of use to, to people who are um, watching this live um if you're watching this on playback try and join the live um you know th this is what's interesting about these videos they're not just recorded for youtube as a as a pre-recorded piece they are a live interaction thing so if you if you are able to join the stream um 7 p.m british summer time um, then on every sunday you can post questions you can interact with the you know the rest of the people that are on board and uh, you know it makes it more interesting place may you know you can get more direct uh, information more more interaction so yes um, if you're watching this on uh, on playback why not consider joining and if you watch it on playback and uh, you know you can't make that comment um, in the in the comment stream as well i always appreciate a comment there so you could be the comment winner of the week um you know if you put the right comment there so there's the last ones there we go so we'll wrap it up there um Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next week where we'll continue to uh, build robots, bring them to life with code and have a whole load of fun along the way. Thanks for watching. Ciao for now.